Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you're having a wonderful one. I know I am because we got so much from Vanity Fair on The Last Jedi with a whole big behind the scenes article and a ton of images and pictures that just oh, are so good. And I'm so excited to talk about them right now. So without further ado, we're gonna talk about the pictures first and then we'll talk, to the, talk about the article near the end of this video. Now, the first image I want to talk about is this one, which is Luke and Rey standing in front of some of those weird beehive hut things on Octo. Uh, there's two things that I want to talk about with this picture. Number one, you'll notice that Luke has his uh, robo hand. Well, it's actually his right hand, his robo hand, uh, covered with a leather glove that looks very familiar. So for anybody that didn't know whose hand that was, whether or not that was Rey's hand or Luke's hand or maybe a different character's hand, touching that Jedi symbol uh, on that piece of parchment or whatever it is in um, uh, the last Jedi teaser trailer, we can now be 90% sure that that had to have been Luke. The other thing I really wanted to talk about involving this image is the hut in the back, or rather what lives in it. Apparently, Luke has not been completely all alone on Octo. Apparently there is a small population of caretaker creatures, caretaker beings, caretaker somethings, living on Octo, which is seems really strange to me. It all looked like abandoned ruins and stuff, so it's a little bit odd to me that there would be other beings living on this planet. And it... I'm not sure how I feel about that, to be honest. Uh, personal opinion time. I, I, I like the idea of Luke wanting to just be completely alone and isolated. So him being involved with this caretaker species doesn't quite sit right with me. And they're not even Ewoks, according to Ryan Johnson. So, meh. And I love Ewoks. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. Well... We'll see what they are, and uh, I guess we'll figure out what in the film, uh, what happens in the film. Next image is Rey with her lightsaber. Yes, her lightsaber. That's the big thing I want to talk about with this picture in particular. Pablo Hidalgo is uh, quoted as saying that the marketing department is no longer considering it to be Anakin's or Luke's saber. It is being considered as Rey's saber. That is what the marketing department is branding all the toys and stuff like that, which they did start doing, uh, I think, last year-ish. And I'm totally cool with that. I know a lot of people are upset with that because that's the Skywalker saber. So unless Rey is a Skywalker, which she could be, uh, they don't want her to have it. But for me, I'm totally cool with that because it fills in the whole mythology thing. I mean, if you look at, you know, artifacts and weapons, legend and all that kind of stuff in uh, works of uh, fantasy and even some of the other space opera style stuff, uh, artifacts don't stay in the family for a very long time. Eventually they are lost, like on Bespin, and then they are found by another great hero that is coming along to uh, fulfill their purpose during their time in this grand uh, story arc that we all love. So I, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. It's up to you guys what your opinion is. Just uh, wanted to throw in my two cents that I am totally fine with that being Ray's saber now. This image is, I, I was debating on whether or not I wanted to talk about this image. It's a really beautiful image. Like all of these images are amazingly beautiful. Uh, I believe that it was all photographed by Annie uh, Lebovitz, I believe. L-E-I-B-O-V-I-T-Z phenomenal photographer and from what I understand she's a legendary photographer at least that's what a lot of other news sources are saying so and judging from this work holy crap but anyways back to this picture that I wasn't thinking about talking or I was thinking about not talking about uh it's absolutely beautiful we know that Ray and Chewbacca are going to be in the cockpit of the Falcon over or at Octo uh or Octo Octo to whatever. Uh, at least that's what this looks like. I'm looking at it right now on my monitor, and you can see just on Ray's side, near the bottom of the view screen, you can see an island, and it looks like it's an ocean otherwise. So 
I'm willing to bet that this is probably Octo. That's pretty much the only thing that I've been able to glean from this image, but please let me know down in the comments if you guys see anything in any of these images. Uh, I would love to know your guys' opinions on these kind of things. But anyways, onwards to the next picture. Another set of photos that I want to talk about are these really, really beautiful. These clearly aren't like uh, screenshots or uh, production stills or anything like that. They must be, uh, they're actual like set, like pretty photographs that you would take at like a convention or something like that or at a photo booth. Uh, for baby pictures or whatever, but they're set in this really beautiful looking, uh, like almost renaissance e painting thing or style, I guess. I don't know. I'm not an art critic, but it, they're absolutely wonderful. You've got uh, an image of Leia uh, or Carrie Fisher as Leia in this wonderful stateswoman-y, the popped collar and the oh, flowing robes. It's such a pretty picture, such a wonderful portrait of uh, Carrie Fisher and Princess Leia. Uh, let's see here. We've got another image of uh, Poe and Finn and the new character Rose, who uh, we learned a little bit about in the uh, Last Jedi panel at Star Wars Celebration. Uh, she is a mechanic for the resistance and, uh, really excites me because apparently it's going to be Finn and Rose going on a, um, oh, what is it? Like, a like a secret mission behind enemy lines kind of thing. And apparently Rose, Rose's, uh, Rose has a sister who is, apparently a gunner for the resistance. I'm willing to bet, uh, Alex actually mentioned this, uh, Alex over at Star Wars Explained mentioned this, uh, in his, uh, review video of all this news, uh, that he thinks that, um, Rose's sister is going to be killed near the beginning of the film during that whole first order attack, uh, that we see in the teaser trailer. And that would uh, serve as a very good motivator for the character of Rose to cease being a mechanic and start being a hero. And I'm inclined to agree with him. The next set of images I want to talk about is the Canto Bite Casino images and all of the aliens within said images. And first off, holy cow, the FX and makeup effects and whatever physical effects that is in this film look phenomenal. Holy cow. They just blow my mind. Like, obviously the, the, the pictures have been color corrected and stuff, uh, digitally enhanced and all that. But like, uh, if you look at, uh, this week's Star Wars show, uh, they have actual like moving images and stuff like actual film, uh, during these photo shoots and th the costumes and the makeup look they look real. It's absolutely mind boggling how good the creature shop is over at Lucasfilm. It's mind boggling. Oh, it's so good. Uh, I guess the other thing that I want to talk about real quick is, uh, no, that's not a Bothan. No, Pablo Hidalgo did his, um, he Pabloed. <laughs> Changed his name on Twitter to no, that's not a Bothan or it, that's not a Bothan. Okay, it's not a Bothan, fine. Which means that they must be using the Bothan somewhere else, right? Eh, maybe, I don't know. But anyways, next, images. Now, two new characters. We finally have details on Laura Dern's and Benici del Toro's characters. Uh, we know that Laura Dern is going to be playing uh, Vice Admiral Amelin Holdo, a newcomer to the saga. Uh, apparently she is a resistance vice admiral, not a first order or a former empire or a, a new republic vice admiral, but a resistance vice admiral, whatever that might mean. Now, judging from her dress and her fashion in this uh, image, I'm willing to bet that she's going to be at that casino that we were just talking about. So is she a traitor that Finn and Rose have to uh, bring to justice? Is she a uh, uh, is she needing extraction from a undercover op that she's working on? Of course, why would they send an 
vice admiral on an undercover op, but they also put generals in charge of space things, so, eh, whatever. Space combats, eh, whatever. I'm okay with whatever it ends up turning out to be, and I love the design of this character, at least that we got in this image, and Laura Dern is a phenomenal performer. I'm, I'm cool with it. Onwards to Benicio del Toro's character, who is only being referred to as DJ. And apparently he is unnamed throughout this entire movie. Apparently? Okay, apparently that will become, uh, the reason for that will become apparent once we see the movie. Okay? I have no idea what that means. Apparently he is just another newcomer to the saga. He apparently is, uh, uh a grifter. Uh, okay, whatever that might mean. Uh, and judging from the look of him in this image, he's... Uh, he, he's either a smuggler, or, I mean, I'm still staring at the image going, who are you? Uh, but he, he has to be either a smuggler, uh, or maybe a renegade force user, or an information broker or something. He's something not quite squeaky clean. And Benicio Del Toro plays those kind of characters wonderfully, so I'm totally okay with it. Also, this crushes my dreams of him playing Thrawn. Okay, fine, I suppose. Could be playing Eli Vanto, maybe. Maybe, I don't think so. But he could be. Eh. Oh, well. Maybe he's Ezra Bridger. <laughs> he's got a scar in the same spot. Uh, if you're not following the uh, 1138 Twitter handle, uh, do it. The, the, that, the, whoever runs that Twitter handle is one of the wittiest Star Wars fans ever. Go follow him. I'll leave a link to his Twitter bio uh, or his Twitter profile, whatever. I don't what they call him on Twitter. What decade is it? Now, onwards to the baddies, or the confirmed baddies, the ones that we know are baddies. <laughs> we got Dominic Gleason, we got Adam Driver, and we've got Gwendolyn Christie. Oh, Brienne of Tarth. I'm only midway through, or no, I just finished season two. Yes, I know, I'm a terrible person. But I've only finished season two of Game of Thrones, but I love Brienne of Tarth. And the fact that we get to see a helmetless, or maskless, or whatever you want to call it, uh, Gwendolyn Christie playing Captain Phasma. Yes, she was ridiculously underutilized in The Force Awakens, one of my very few serious complaints about that film. And we get more of her. Oh, and Kaiwo has a face scar, I guess. And Dominic Gleeson is still Nazi-ish, I guess. I don't know. I think that about does it on the images for me. But uh, we still need to talk about the overall article, the actual written words and whatnot. Um, we actually knocked out a whole ton of the article just while we were talking about the images, but uh, the overall tone of the article is a bit depressing, to be honest. Uh, it, it does concentrate quite heavily on uh, Carrie's passing in uh, December of 2016, which I know a lot of us are still hurting from. Um, and I can't even imagine the people that are working on this film. That must... <sighs> yeah. I, I know that it would kill me if I actually personally knew Carrie. Uh, I mean, I only knew her from celebration panels and interviews and the movies that she's been in. Uh, I can't even imagine having to work through a creative process that she was a part of uh, without her. Uh, apparently, episode nine was meant to um, uh, center quite heavily on the character of Leia and thus Carrie. Um but that can't happen anymore. So uh, that means that, um, I can't remember his name, the guy that directed Jurassic World, uh, whatever, him and the story group and uh, his writers and Kathleen Kennedy and Disney and all of Lucasfilm are kind of trying to figure out how to rework episode nine to uh, accommodate um, for uh, Carrie's absence right now. Um, 
which sucks. And I don't want to end this uh, episode on a down note. So let's go ahead and talk about one of the wonderful things that apparently Carrie got to do while she was a filming episode eight. Apparently she had to slap Poe Dameron or Oscar Isaac uh, 27 times. <laughs> <laughs> had to do something like 27 takes, and she did not let up every single time. Apparently she loved it every single time, and <laughs> Oscar Isaac said that his face was sore from uh, her wrath, which is awesome. Uh, quick little bit of speculation about that is that uh, apparently, uh, my guess is that she had something, or Poe said something about her son, and... Uh, or he questioned her her leadership regarding her son, something related to her son, and that's what uh, ticked off Leia enough to slap the crap out of him. Sweet, I'll take it. <sighs> Anyways, I think that's about it for all of this news, guys. It's only a few months away. Well, uh, six and a half months, something. What year is it? Yeah, it's... Uh, it's a while away. We're less than a year away from The Last Jedi, and I cannot be more excited. I know I'm going to get even more pumped up all throughout the ne the coming months, and I look forward to getting pumped up and hyped up with you guys. Uh, you guys can check me out over on Twitch, where we do uh, Star Wars games on Sunday nights, and I play whatever I kind of feel like playing on Wednesday mornings. You can hit me up over on Twitter, which I'll also have linked down in the description and uh, make sure that you hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content and you want more of it. It helps me to understand that I'm doing things the right way. Thank you guys so much. And as always, may the Force be with you. <laughs>